Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. I'm Mina, and we are on our way to the Trial Grounds. And while I'm on my way there, I might as well start talking about some of my thoughts. Um, <clears throat> so I guess I'll start from, from the beginning. Uh, I, I, so I had a lot of thoughts going in my mind. And the first thing I'm going to say is right now I have... Uh, the least idea of who the killer might be that I've had this entire game where I've got I guess I've got four suspects but none of them have any real like nothing meaty or substantial to them that I can really discuss so I guess you know let's start from what I've got uh, number one and this one's unlikely for a bunch of reasons, is Kibo. Uh, he was the first one out. Uh, and, and he himself has said that, and the logs show that, that he was the first one out besides Kaido. And, but I just, I don't see how he could have done anything to her. And I don't think it's him, but that's the only thing I have. For him that's it that's literally it congratulations <laughs> that's it uh the second thing is i guess kaito could have done it but again this doesn't feel very good as a reason why um he could have done it is that he was out early but Mew was the one who forced him out and so i just don't see i just don't see how like, several things could have happened in in this murder with him being the killer. Because it, it just wouldn't add up as a whole. So, but he is a suspect because I don't have anybody else. Uh, third suspect is... Is, uh... Uh, Gonta? And the, the reason why I say Gonta is because he was acting kind of weird inside the game. And I don't know if that has something to do with, like, like messing up that headset thing. They made a big deal out of that headset, which is why I think it has something to do with, with Gonta. But I don't know what that exactly could have done. I mean, it said that it would be memories and consciousness swapped, so... I think that's why he doesn't remember being in there. Like, he's he's saying something to the effect of, uh... Like, he, he just slept or he dreamed and everybody's writing it off as like, Oh, he doesn't understand the concept. But I think he's being serious. So, maybe Kokichi tricked him into, like messing up his headset for some reason? I don't know. So that's the other thing. And the the last person, the fourth suspect that I have is Kokichi. And the reason why I picked Kokichi as suspicious is because he seems to understand a lot about what happened in this murder. And that leads me to think that he he may, may have done it. But it seems pretty obvious that that like that seems so obvious that he he did it that I don't think he, that's it I think rather he saw the murder now how did the murder take place so while I was playing the game the first time um well the only time the first time uh I didn't I didn't catch a couple of things that I noticed while I was editing so while I was editing the episode um last night I saw like or, well not just saw I read that they had heard like something slam into the side of the chapel and that's what made them go outside and find Mew laying there now if I'm correct and the maps line up the way that I think they do that means that she came and slammed against the building somehow or somebody like hit her against the building which doesn't seem like, a likely thing, because everybody who was on that side of the chapel was inside the building. This is also going to, like, debunk my theory on Kibo being the killer, because there, there, there was stuff that happened. It makes it seem more likely that the people on the... on the side of the building with, uh... 
or on the side of the map with me and everyone else on the other team. So I think that she was on the rooftop and that lattice was under her body and all of the things with her like slid off the roof. Now, I'm guessing that it wrapped around to the other side of the map and she went sliding with it because objects were able to pass through that map and she or, or non-human things so since she's not human she was able to slide through to the other side and that means that means if, if I'm right and I think I'm right that that's how that happened I think that means that I think that means that someone on, on my side is the killer. So that means Kaito, uh, Shuichi, who it's not, um, Kokichi, Gonta, and Samugi. I didn't watch Samugi the entire time because I was in the I was in the kitchen. So it could be her, I guess. But why would she tell me that she saw Mew walking around outside? That I I wouldn't do that if I was if I was the the killer. I wouldn't admit to seeing something like that, I guess. Ah, uh, maybe maybe that's to throw us off, though. I, I don't know. All I, all I can say is is that I think that the murder has to be someone on the the mansion side of the of the of the map. I think she got killed on the top of the roof. I I don't know if she was killed inside the game or outside the game. I don't understand how the toilet paper comes into play. It's it's po like can you be strangled by the toilet paper? It says that it's unbreakable. So I would assume that you could be. So someone would have had to strangle her, but if someone strangled her, like, it can't be Kokichi because he couldn't have touched her. He would have been paralyzed. So that's why I don't think it's Kokichi. That means it has to be, and oh god, this is so terrible. It has to be Samugi, Gonta, or Kaito, doesn't it? That's what that means. It has to be one of them. And I don't think it's Kaito, because Kaito got logged out by Mew. Didn't he? So that means it's gotta be Samugi or Gonta. Uh, um... It looks like that's everyone. <laughs> oh, this everyone, huh? There are a lot less of us now. It's plain to see. This is just half of what we started with. Unfortunately. Because we have allowed this game to continue, we must stop it somehow. Right? But we can't stop now. We can't let the fun end. Don't. C cut that out. I'm certain this trial will be the last one. Hey. Let's focus on surviving this class trial first. I guess. You're right. If we mess up here, our numbers will go down even quicker. It'd be just the culprit left. But... That might be okay. Maybe that's just another way to stop the killing game. If we all die then the killing game would end. What? Don't say stupid crap like that. It's pointless if we all die. Okay. Well, we don't have to worry. We've got the ultimate detective on our side. You're right. Yeah, it's time for the detective to shine. Shuichi, please keep up the good work. Uh, okay. Y yeah, I'll do my best. Yes, I have to keep it together. This is my only time my talent can shine. I'm not just saving my life. Everyone's life is on the line. If I can't find the truth here, everyone will be sacrificed. And I will never let that happen. Come on, man. Hey, Shuichi. You're getting all tense. Huh? Uh, what? I mean... <laughs> Didn't I tell you before? Shuichi, don't carry the burden all. Get it? And didn't I tell you before not to get in the way, Kaito? Huh? Huh? What's your problem? You really don't get it. We're all relying on Shuichi to carry our asses through the class trial, okay? 
You're like a parrot, repeating the same lines over and over. You're bothering him. Well, you know. I think that's the most annoying thing you can do to Shuichi. You know that? Huh? What, what do you mean? I'm not... Shut up. Kokichi, you're annoying. Please don't. Whoa, killer girl's glaring at me. I'm only kidding around. Aki's glare seemed to do the trick, and Kokichi turned around dejected. Jeez. Finally, that pest is gone. Thanks, Maki Roll. <sighs> Just suck it up, Kaito. Now's not the time to be bickering with each other. Got it. Huh, my bad. Sorry. Um. Kaito, I'm okay. Hmm? Hmm? Well. I know what you want to say, Kaito. So you don't have to worry. I believe in I you. I see. In that case, I'll believe in you and I won't say anything else. Shuichi! But if you have any problems, let me know. I'll help you. I'm here for you, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Kaito. Going to do his best. Going to not really understand what happened. Going to try real hard to be useful this time. Shuichi, that obnoxious guy is always bothering you. Shuichi! If you ever need my help, call me. I'll shut him up so he never gets in your way. Um... Mew certainly wasn't perfect, but that doesn't mean she deserved to be killed. <sighs> no one deserves what happened to her. Not a single person. I, I also don't get what the poison was for. I have a feeling it was to set Kokichi up. And I, I think Kokichi had like a huge thing to do with this murder, but I don't think he did the murder himself. I really don't. I'm standing by that. I think he did something to cause this murder, though. I think he set up a trap. Hey, Shuichi. We'll be depending on you this time, too, Mr. Ultimate Detective. And the final thing is, is that I know that um, some of you guys asked me about uh, the back route. I didn't know what the back route was, so I did ask, like, what a back route is. And, um, unfortunately, I got a couple of messages that were a little too detailed about exactly how to do the back route. And it was a little too late for me to n not see it, so I've kind of been semi-spoiled on how to do a back route. As much as I would like to do it now, I don't want to do it because I feel like that ruins part of the blind. So I'm just going to not do the back route. I, I now know that it exists and I will try and figure it out in later stuff that happens in the game. But I'm definitely skipping this first one. I'm sorry. The eight of us got into the elevator. The door shut behind us. Like all those times before, we descended. It was dead quiet. The only sound I could hear was the beating of my heart in my ears. My body was trembling. The more I tried to control it, the worse it got. There's no way to get used to it, really. The fear of death. We're all fighting it. Trying to be courageous. We all felt as though we were going to our own execution. No, not an execution. A test of our will to survive. Finally, the elevator stopped and the doors opened. And though I couldn't explain it, my body stopped trembling. Welcome! 
welcome. Go ahead and stand behind any open podium. Ooh. Move your asses. You don't want to see what I'll do to you if you keep father waiting. Huh? Wait, is he back to normal? Why? Huh? You're not friend anymore. <laughs> your tricks must feel pretty slick using Montaro's forgetfulness to befriend him. He just decided on his own that we weren't friends. You bastards! But I won't let you guys trick Monotaro anymore, because he's already forgotten. He may have forgotten that he was on Daddy's side, but now he's forgotten that he had forgotten that he was on Daddy's side. Thanks to me, because I smacked the stuffing out of him. Mm, yeah, how confusing. Well, whatever. Really? I can't remember, but one of you guys is the culprit, right? I can't be in the same room as a killer. It's dangerous. Maybe I'm gonna go lock myself in my room. Maybe I'll even set up a barricade. Yeah. That's another death flag. Anyway. Let's get it started. This heart racing excitement as the blackened and the spotless face off. We went to our podiums as always. We knew what we had to do. There was no protest left in us. It's already the fourth time. The fourth class trial is about to begin. <laughs> Mio Aruma, the ultimate inventor. She may have given us a lot of trouble, but we all miss her. <laughs> it's a tragedy after all. She helped me and Kaede with those cameras, gave Kibo extra functions. She did do all these things. I do appreciate that. In the end, she had done a lot for us. And the culprit that killed her. Jesus, almost everybody's died on this one. That does not bode well for you guys. I need to discover who that is. In order to survive, I have to find the culprit. And I will fight for it. I will fight with truth and lies in this class trial. The students enter a virtual world to try to find the truth of the world, but somehow Mew is killed. The trial blends a virtual world with the real world. Ahem. Now then, let's begin with a basic explanation. <laughs> ah, screw it. This is tiresome. You need more motivation! I do. I really, really do. Now then, let's start this class trial. Hanakuma, what is wrong with you? Before we start, I just want to ask something since there's not a lot of us left. What happens if the votes result in two first places? Huh? You mean like... a tie? It means they're both the black and... As long as one of them is correct, it's fine. Daddy, are you sure you should make a decision like that so casually? Yeah, fine. Whatever. So, okay. Thanks. Since that's answered, I can start enjoying this life or death game now. What game? How long are you going to keep saying that? Just ignore Kokichi. The rest of us need to work together to find the truth. Got it! We can't die here! Oh my! Himiko has become so determined! It's true! People really do change! But now she's lost what made her so unique. That's none of your business! We should focus on the class trial. First, we need to clarify... Kaito's the culprit! Okay. <laughs> what? Say that to my face! While we were all still logged in, Kaito logged out alone, right? You were able to move freely. Doesn't that mean you could have committed the murder? Don't screw around! There's no way I'm the culprit! Yeah, I can prove that. Kaito right! Kaito couldn't have killed you! How long are you gonna keep saying that? Trusted people can still kill, you know. We already saw that a bunch of times. 
so many times since Kaede. The fact that Kaido was the only one logged out is suspicious. But he's not the culprit. He can't be. Yeah, I don't think so. There's, there's a lot of reasons why he couldn't be. Namely because I think the killer was on the roof and he got logged out. By himself. You were still logged in though. That's when you poisoned him, right, Kaido? Kaito culprit? Impossible! Of course it's impossible, because I didn't do it! I mean, we found that bottle of poison on Kokichi's seat, didn't we? The culprit was trying to pin the blame on me. That diversion was part of your plan, right, Kaito? Well, Kaito, any last words? What do you mean, last words? Okay. One, one second. First, we need to decide if you was killed in the real world or the virtual world. That's where the problem lies. Okay, the, the bottle of poison. The bottle of poison is. Yeah. Not, not how she died for sure. Mew wasn't killed by poison, and the warning on the label proves it. So, but Kokichi was the one who even told me about the warning on the label. It's almost like he helped me figure out that Kaito wasn't the one who did it in the first place. Drinking the poison would result in subconjunctival hemorrhaging. In other words, your eyes would be bloodshot. Oh, but Mew's body. That's right. Her eyes weren't bloodshot. She wasn't killed by that poison. Then what was that poison for? Probably a diversion. The culprit wanted us to think Mew died by poison. Then, what was her real cause of death? Mew's real cause of death. The only one I can think of. Um. It's not gonna be this, is it? Oh no! What was Mew's cause of death? The loud noise? Is that really the cause of death? I don't understand. Judging from the body, maybe the cause of death wasn't located in the real Damn world. It. Well, <laughs> that's what I was saying! What was Mew's cause of death? How do I say the virtual world? I do not know. Smoogie's account. Loud noise. By looking at her body, we can tell she wasn't killed by poison. That's the one thing we do know. Is there anything oh, that could no. have been the murder weapon? What? I don't know? Um... The cords? No? Oh, it's this! The Killing Game Simulator! This is it. Duh! Oh my god, I'm an idiot! The news cause of death was the Killing Game Simulator itself. <sighs> In the virtual world, if your avatar takes fatal damage, your real body dies of shock. That was made clear in the program's text file. Miyu received fatal damage in the virtual world and died from that shock. In that case, it's fair to say that the cause of death was actually the simulator. Um, Gonta has question. Where is this virtual world place? 
What floor is it on? If you don't understand, then don't say anything. If Mew was killed in the virtual world, then the next thing we need to figure out is what caused her to incur fatal damage within the virtual world. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Gonta was awake in there or whatever. Or like he, he literally doesn't have any memories of it. I think I think he his headset was messed up. So her cause of death in the virtual world is the one that matters. Um. Uh, it seems like Gonta is confused. So why don't we review things a bit? Um. So we split into two groups to find the secret of the outside world. The ones who searched the mansion were me, Shuichi, Samugi, Gonta, and that NPC Kaito. Hey, who you call an NPC, you ASS? And the others who searched the chapel were Keyboy, Maki, Kimiko, and the late me. How could someone have given her fatal damage in that situation? That's what we gotta think about. Now, let's all work together. <sighs> okay. Aww, little Himiku is all grown up. Too bad your chest hasn't grown up, though. This is really confusing. That was uncalled for! Someday, my chest will grow like crazy! Let's begin, then. The fatal damage that Mew received in the virtual world. Let's pin that down. I mean, Kokichi practically told me. In the virtual world, Mew was fatally injured. So let's focus our efforts on that first. Whoever did that to Mew was dropped right next to her avatar. It has to be the hammer! I don't think that's the We're hammer. going to beat her with his bare hands. No. Are we certain that blunt force was involved? I think strangulation is more likely. Yes, how do I agree with that? It's possible she was pushed from a... Oh, a great height. fudge, I forget the controls. Could she have to... Ground? In the virtual world, Mew was fatally injured. Okay. So it's Mew's corpse. On that first. It's Mew's corpse and I'm agreeing with Maki. We're going to beat her with his bare hands. Are we certain that blunt force was involved? I think strangulation. Yeah. I agree. It's obvious. She's even grabbing at her neck. Mew's body showed severe trauma and signs of a struggle. Yeah, she looked like she suffered. Very hard to look at. Right. And the virtual world is connected to our five senses. If her body experienced pain, she must have been in pain in the virtual world as well. Knowing that, I believe Maki is correct. You were strangled to death. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I get that. I also get that she was planning Kokichi's murder. What I don't understand at all is who did this. Strangling and poison are the only methods that can make her look like she's suffocating. But we already removed the possibility of poison, so it can only be strangulation. And, and it was done in the virtual world? I guess it had to be. There's nobody who could have done it outside, like, besides Kaito. He'd be the only one who could have done that outside of there. Also, when a victim is poisoned, they commonly grab their chest and move. But Mew was holding her throat. It's obvious she was trying to protect her windpipe. Oh. The Assassin Master gets really chatty when it comes to corpses. <laughs> in that case, her exact cause of death is being strangled in the virtual world. 
But is strangulation even possible in the virtual world? Yeah, I wondered that myself. If the avatars were equally strong, it would be difficult to strangle a resisting victim. Yeah, if she was just as strong as them, no way they could have strangled her. Then the culprit would need a tool. There are tons of cases where a weaker person would strangle a stronger person with a rope. Wow, you know a lot about killing, nerd. Not how I would have phrased it. But was there even a rope in that world? <laughs> I don't remember seeing it. There was a toilet paper. Then they must have used something else as a rope. Something for a rope, hmm? I have an idea of what it might be. I found it during the investigation. Okay. The toilet paper. This is it! Okay. During the investigation, we found toilet paper outside the mansion. Is this toilet paper? What would toilet paper be doing here? I'm guessing that the toilet paper was used to strangle her. Don't to no can ignore that! <laughs> What do you mean, Shuichi? Huh? What's wrong? What's wrong? Shuichi goofing off! Not gentlemanly at all! Right? He, he doesn't understand- he didn't hear the rules in the world. So he doesn't know this. There's no time for nonsense! You know what you toilet paper? In place of rope! Would tear too easy! Even Gonta know that! And Gonta not smart! No, I'm positive toilet paper was used instead of rope. Why you not take this seriously? You call yourself ultimate detective? Use your head! Figure out real murder weapon! No, I'm positive toilet paper was used instead of rope. No time for nonsense! You know can use toilet paper in place of rope! What tear too easy! Okay, this. Alright, got it. The toilet paper wouldn't tear. Because in the virtual world, objects are unbreakable. <laughs> You're so dumb, Gonta. You didn't even know that? If objects can't break in that world, then toilet paper shouldn't be able to tear. And since it couldn't tear, it could be used as a rope. Gonta not really understand, but... Sorry, Shuichi. Gonta was wrong. No, it's not your fault. It's okay, Gonta. Don't worry about it. Killed by toilet paper. It was a fitting end for her. <laughs> a fitting end? I do not fully understand that logic. <laughs> but if Mio was killed near the chapel, why was the murder weapon by the mansion? Maybe the culprit tried to get rid of it to destroy the evidence. Culprit meant to get rid of the evidence. They did a poor job of it. Oh, you know what? I just realized my whole lattice on the roof thing makes sense now because it probably went bang, 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 bang on the roof, which is what startled me and Samugi. It's a much better place where they could have destroyed it. If toilet paper was the murder weapon, then what's the deal with the hammer next to her? Perhaps the culprit prepared a backup weapon, just in case. No. The culprit didn't bring the hammer. No, it's obvious who brought it. No? But who else but the culprit would bring a hammer? Wait, we already know who brought that hammer. The person who brought the hammer was Mew. 
That's it. Mew was the one who brought the hammer. Mew bring hammer? Remember what she told us? She removed all the dangerous objects. I rewrote a program to delete all the dangerous objects that can be used as weapons. All of them. Not a single dangerous weapon was left in the game. What are you? Why, why would you doubt me? I'm, I'm obviously the best girl. Stupid. Yeah, she did say she deleted any dangerous objects. If that were true, she wouldn't have missed something like a hammer. I just noticed she's got like triple X's on her face. Ah. Meaning that Mew must have left it on purpose. On purpose? But why she do that? Because she was gonna kill someone. Mew brought the hammer for sure, but what did she need it for? I need to make that clear. Oh, well, it's it's pretty clear. It's easy. She wanted to kill uh, Kokichi. Mew and Kokichi's meeting probably. The what was she planning to do? Maybe use it to break down a wall. Uses for a hammer. Gonta, no. Mew gonna build stuff with hammer. She probably just brought it for self-defense. Nope. Or she secretly met up with someone. I agree. Why'd you give me the answer? Mew was gonna meet up with someone in the virtual world. Mm-hmm. With me. I was supposed to meet up with Mew on the roof of the mansion. What? Is that true? I overheard them talking about it at the chapel. By the way, Mew asked to meet up with me before we went into the virtual world. I totally forgot where we were supposed to meet, so good thing Keyboy spied on us. Wait, so Mew called Kokichi out? If Mew brought the hammer, I wonder what she was planning to do with it. Kokichi's already figured it out. She was planning to. Kill Kokichi! That's it! That's easy. Easy. She was trying to kill Kokichi. She was what? Yep. She plotted to meet up with me and then kill me with the hammer. If you want to prove this, you'll need to figure out Mew's plan, okay? Mew's plan, huh? I'm sure if I analyze the clues we found, I can figure something out. Alright, let's do this. This is the easy part. Tried to kill Kokichi. Uh, Mew? Easy? Mew Iruma. Where was Mew trying to kill Kokichi? A roof? The virtual world. Why was a bottle of poison on Kokichi's seat? It was planted? To divert attention? Oh, to divert attention away from the, the virtual world as being the cause. It connects. I see. She wanted it to appear as if Kokichi was killed in the real world. Oh, of course. Okay, all right. It makes it, it makes sense. She made she made Kaito log out. She she made sure that the two of them were over there. She made it so that way, like it looked like Kaito would have the only person Kaito would have. In, in, like bumped into on his way to the salon was literally Kokichi so if if yeah it makes sense okay so if she left the poison out there it would look like Kaito had like somehow snuck out of the salon into the real world and and killed Kokichi via poison she 
Place the poison on my seat to make us think the murder happened in the real world. He did that too? What? Mew was the one who put that poison bottle there? No, that ain't right. Something's definitely weird about that. No, it makes sense. When could Mew have put the poison there? If she did place the poison log in, log medicine, out, then she must have logged out at some point. No. And then what? Log back in? No. Kokichi, weren't you in the salon around that time? Did you see her log in or log out at all? Nope, I didn't see that at all. If she hadn't logged in or out, then you couldn't have placed the poison. Then who put poison bottle? The only person who logged out early was Kaito. Kaito, your grave just got ten feet deep. Hey. No, it was me, guys. Okay. <laughs> she was the last one in. She had time to do it. That's why she took two minutes to log in. It was Mew who planted the poison on Kokichi's chair. She had plenty of time to do it. Here, take a look at this. Is this a record of who went in and out of the virtual world? That's right. It says that Mew was the last of us to log in. Yeah, what about it? If she logged in last, she would have had time to move around in the real world after the previous person logged in. That right! She could have placed Poison Bottle on Kokiji's seat! This was all part of Mew's plan. She tried to kill me in the virtual world, make us think it happened in the real world, and then pin the crime on Kaito. Well, that's not my fault! Which is why she manually logged you out, just for that purpose. Yeah. She did that to me? That's exactly what happened. Yes, I'm positive of that. Mew used a method only she could use to log Kaito out manually. How did Mew log Kaito out? With the cell phone. Cell phone. This is it! It was the cell phone found by Mew's avatar. That cell phone worked the same way as the phone in the salon. It logs users in and out. I verified this myself when I spoke Kaito's name into it. How did... How did Kikichi know about that, though? Logged out just as I thought. I see. With that cell phone, she could force anyone to log out at any time. But Mew never mentioned a cell phone, right? That's what Shuichi referred to when he mentioned a method only she could use. She kept the cell phone a secret on purpose, so she could use it for the murder. So, she really was planning a murder. Yeah, but how did you know? You didn't come with us. And she tried to set me up. Well, I knew that from the start. Then why did you say I was the culprit? Because I wanted to get it through your thick skull. People you trust to defend will ultimately betray you. This is a game of suspicion. Well, I think your ideals should stay the same. Because phonies like you are what make the game more interesting. Don't you agree, Monokuma? Hmm? Do I? I don't know about that. Huh? Wait, what were we talking about? Monokuma, get your head in the game. I wonder when Daddy's gonna get his motivation back. Yeah, if Father keeps slacking off, all the work is gonna get forced onto Mommy. Huh? Mommy? <laughs> My head! I'm about to remember something, but I can't. What's wrong, Monotaro? Pull yourself together! Anywho, it's a blessing in disguise that Mew died and not me. 
What you mean? Because she wouldn't have said anything about what really happened in the virtual world. You guys would have had a way harder time finding the culprit, you know. She would have been able to lie about the virtual world settings as much as she wanted. And you'd never know that the murder actually took place in the virtual world. So that's why she decided to attempt a murder. Because she had total control. And the reason Mew was so insistent we go into the virtual world was... Like, early on in this chapter, she was really acting pretty sketchy. Like, she was, like, doing that weird laughing thing to herself, which to me was, like, somebody who was on the break of slipping. And then all of a sudden she became super positive and excited about this virtual world. Made me think she was actually going to try and do a killing. <clears throat> And it was kind of like I said, how I didn't think Mew would have done, like, I think earlier, like, I, I ruled her out as a suspect because I thought she would use her talents to actually commit a murder. This is exactly the type of murder she would have tried to commit. You guys are only bitching because you haven't been to the virtual world yet. But once you go, you'll understand. Seriously, it's so fucking awesome. I know you guys will love it. And then you're gonna fall in love with me for showing it to you guys. So let's just dive right in, okay? We'll do it together. She was insistent we go there so she could kill us. What a shady person. I was sad that she was gone, but now I don't know what to think. <laughs> nice! Backstabbed by a trusted friend. See? That's an ideal fun situation! Now we can start a real class trial! Hey, Kokichi sort of sound like Monokuma. Hmm? Really? I don't sound anything like him. No, you're just like Monokuma. Both of you are cowards. You never speak the truth or show your true face. Wait, coward? You say some interesting things sometimes, Kaito. Smiling, putting on a mask, never saying what you really think. That kind of cowardice is just like Monokuma. Daddy, they're calling you a coward. Aren't you going to do something? Yeah, yeah, I just got to do my signature laugh, right? <laughs> there, I get it. He's completely lost his drive. Like a one-hit wonder who clings to their former fame. Uh, my head! Listen up, Kokichi! The hell with this game of suspicion crap! I will never be okay with it! I'm just gonna believe in everyone! Instead of suspecting my friends, I'm gonna find the truth by believing in them! I don't... I, I'm like, the entire time they're talking, I'm just trying to figure out this murder. Well, if you think you can win this game like that... Then sure, be my guest. Of course I can. I don't need your permission. How long are you guys going to argue? Let's hurry this up and continue. I need... I need some some sort of evidence. Something is being kept from me that's keeping me from figuring this out. If we don't find the culprit, then we'll all die. You know that? It's... The thing is, is like, it seems most likely that, that Kokichi did this. He, 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 one hundred percent seems like the the most likely suspect. But at the same at the same time, he can't be the one to have done it. Mew basically made it impossible for him to be the one to do it. I just, I don't. This had to be done by someone who isn't him, and he's just getting a kick out of it. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. If we are going to begin searching for the culprit, let's start with Kokichi's story. Huh? My story? You were meeting with Mio, but she ended up as the victim. So it's only natural for us to think you're the killer, right? Here's my answer. I never met up with Mio. But is that true? Maybe, maybe he did meet up with her. Or maybe he at least saw her. Maybe he, maybe he got himself involved in this murder by making things like, 
more complicated somehow. Like, I don't know. Didn't? You didn't? I tried to go to the roof to meet up with her, but the door was locked. It isn't lock picking your specialty. You should have been able to open it easy. I couldn't pick locks with my avatar body. I didn't have the tools for it either. Also, I never went to the roof. Not even for the meeting. That sounds suspect. I remember you and Gonta went off together when we first started looking. But was the door to the roof actually locked? When I was on the roof before logging out, the door wasn't locked. Huh? How should I know? Then who locks the door to the roof? I already told you. How should I know? When I went to the roof, it wasn't locked. So you gotta be lying. What good would it be if I lied? I don't want to die either, you know. Lying would do you a lot of good if you're the culprit. Mm-hmm, I see. I didn't realize that. What kind of response is that? That's suspicious as hell! It's, it's just, it's too easy if it's him. I just don't, I don't know. Wait, there's no point in arguing about that now. The truth will come out eventually. Before we get to that, we need to discover the truth behind Mew's death. Maybe this will help solve it? Truth? There were mysterious circumstances surrounding her death. I don't know. It's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things moving around, and I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping them all straight. So we need to make sense of those first. I think we do have to kind of clean out some of my questions in order to figure this out. Wow, Shuichi, you know your way around this game. Yes, keep up the hard work. The fate of our lives rests in your hands. So, what is this strange circumstance? Kokichi claims it was Mew who chose the meeting place. But I'm wondering how she got from the chapel to the mansion's roof. Well, that's easy. I see. Mew sent the bridge connecting the mansion and chapel into the river herself. Look, my hand slipped. Oh, I'm such a silly belly. If that's the case, then Mew might not have even gone to the roof. Huh? So she stood me up? It's very rude to break a promise. <laughs> it's true. First, we need to determine if Mew was actually there or not. Did she go? Or was she never on the roof at all? Um... Mew was waiting for me to arrive. Smoogie's account. I'm sure she was waiting on the rooftop of the mansion. No. Mew should have been at the <laughs> No! Oh, That's there, we what? got it. Oh, I don't even know what else anybody else said. I was just like, that's that's definitely the wrong one. You must have gone to the mansion. We have a witness. Yeah. When I was searching the dining room, I saw Mew pass by the window. Sorry, I thought I was just mistaken at first. Since there was no way she could have come to the mansion. But I guess I wasn't mistaken after all. That was definitely new. Then, how did she get to the mansion from the chapel? Did you guys not pay attention? There's some special method only knew me, like with that cell phone. There's no doubt about that. That's why she dropped the bridge. It literally, Monotaro explained it to us all. If the murder occurred when it was impossible <laughs> to cross the river, she wouldn't be implicated. She used a secret method to move from the chapel to the mansion for the murder. She dropped the bridge to make a huge scene just to let everyone know it's no longer there. So, what secret method did she use? Oh, come on, Maki. It won't be that easy to figure out. It's called a secret method for a reason. No worries, guys. As long as we leave it to Shuichi, everything will be A-OK. -okay. What? What are you saying? You can't just rely on Shuichi all the time. This class trial's for all of us. We're here to solve this together. <laughs> you would just slow down Shuichi. Shut up! 
have time to deal with Kokichi. Right now I need to focus on the case. I'm positive that Mew used some kind of special method to get to the mansion. Okay, I just have to figure out what I was. Wall added by Mew. Like a hidden bridge besides that signboard maybe. Or instead of bridge, Mew used some kind of vehicle to go over. Or maybe she teleported with magic. Or she used a warp zone. Maybe there's a place you could cross without a bridge. A hidden route that only Mew could use to get across. Of course it's gonna be There we go. I agree. That's it, Kibo. There was a hidden route only Mew could use. Hmm? Was there really? Yes. Mew modified the program to add a special wall to the world. The wall stretches along the y-axis. But we found two such walls in the virtual world. It's unclear whether Mew added the wall by the mansion or the wall near the chapel. We do know that that wall was set so that only objects could pass through. Don't be naive, Shuichi. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. What is it, Kaito? Jeez, Mew set up a weird wall like that? That is suspicious. But it's got nothing to do with what we were talking about. Nothing to do with it? Huh. You don't even realize your mistake? You losing your edge? Oh well, my sidekick's mistakes are my mistakes. I'll make it right. You could just let me finish. Uh. What we gotta figure out? is how Mew got from the chapel to the mansion. So why waste time talking about the impossible? It's pointless. We gotta take a whole new approach here. Okay, it's map of now, the world. just a second. It's not actually impossible at all. But you just said so, didn't you? That wall Mew set up only lets non-human objects go through it. Humans aren't able to pass through. So Mew obviously wouldn't be able to go through that wall. She's not just an object after all. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'll cut through your words. The wall wasn't the only thing that Mew changed. She also changed her avatar settings from human to object. From human to object? Which means the virtual world treated her avatar as an object. She could have passed through a wall that only non-humans could go through. Is that right? Don't get ahead of yourself, Kaito. We need to listen to everything Shuichi says. I already told you. The more you try, the more you cause us trouble. Totally lame that your own sidekick is dissing you! Kokichi, enough! I wasn't arguing with him. I was just explaining. I don't care. That doesn't bother me at all. It just means even I make mistakes. Don't worry about it, Shuichi. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty funny seeing Kaito try to act all tough like this. Are you trying to start something? Kokichi. Please refrain from making such irrelevant and irrational remarks. Thank you, Kibo. So, if Mew messed with the program and made a wall only she could go through, then her secret route was through that wall? That's it, right? Like using a glitch in a game to walk outside the map. I bet Mew had a hidden passage like that in the back of the chapel. But even if she could walk through walls, was there really a hidden passage? Because Mew said... No, you're not trapped here. Beyond that wall is the end of the world. Literally. Past that wall, nothing exists. Everything ends there. Why would we even believe her now? She's told so many lies that she was planning a murder. 
she probably lied. There would be no point in going if there was nothing on the other side. You lied. Huh. I wonder what the truth is. There's no way to find out now. That cum-soaked urinal cake was totally lying about there being nothing past the wall. She lived a life of pride, vulgarity, and secrets. Lying would be a piece of cake for her. Okichi, you know I have to go that far. Stop it! Don't badmouth mommy! <sighs> Mama Tara! Listen to you, talking about mommy. Like she was a terrible lying whore. She kinda was, though. But mommy wasn't lying. There was no hidden roads in that virtual world. What? Uh, oh, there wasn't, huh? Hey! You can't tell them such an important hint! Oh! If you say that hint is important, then I guess it must be true. Oh, shit! Ah, jeez. You look you cute. Was Kokichi saying all that stuff about you to get the cubs to reveal something? I should thank him, but I have no idea why he does things sometimes. So now that we know there's no hidden route, why did she manipulate the program? It's not there's okay. actually nothing past the wall, then that <sighs> setting was meaningless. I, I think it was supposed to loop. And you wouldn't have done something meaningless. She would have had a plan. Yes. Mew definitely wanted to be able to go through that wall for a reason. We aren't sure why yet, but once we solve the mystery of the virtual world... The mystery of... virtual world? There have been a lot of strange occurrences in the virtual world. If we can determine why, we will also determine what Mew was up to. We'll know why she wanted to pass through the wall. Alright, let's clear up those strange occurrences. Yeah! Gonta will help, even though Gonta not know what you're talking about. Speaking of strange occurrences, I'm just plain worried about that one thing. Remember? That thing that made us notice all the strange occurrences? The sound? The events that led us there. Uh... The loud noise. This is it! Yeah. You mean the loud sound that you and I heard in the kitchen? Hmm. Ah. What was that sound? It sounded as if something was struck very hard. It came from outside, but... Hmm? You all heard that sound too? Yeah. Yes, in the mansion's kitchen. But that sound occurred near the chapel. How did you hear it all the way at the mansion? First off, sound can't go past the map loading point. Did that sound really come from the chapel? That sound was something hitting the chapel wall. It was real loud. And we definitely heard it. We heard Kibo's voice as well. For now, let's go outside and check. Oh no! What? That was Kibo's voice, right? I think I heard him outside. He sounded real close. You heard my voice too? What? That is pretty strange. Exactly. That has to be some kind of clue to the mystery of the virtual world. Okay, it couldn't have been... No, I don't know. Maybe... No... That... I don't know. Okay. Well, let's check the answers later and try to find all the other clues first. There was another mysterious phenomenon in the virtual world, wasn't there? Kokichi talked like he noticed something. Pretending not to know? Even Gonta is suspicious of me? I always thought you would be the one to trust me! Sorry, going to not mean it like that. There's no need to apologize to him. He's probably just lying again. What was the other strange occurrence? Did you see it, Shuichi? Uh, another mysterious phenomenon. 
Something that shouldn't be possible, like Mew in the mansion or that loud noise. I need to remember everything else that happened in there. Oh god. Okay, that, that right there is definitely it. That's it. That's it. The sign that we were using as a bridge was odd to me. Odd how? We mentioned it before, but Mew dropped the sign in the river. Additionally, because because Kokichi noticed this, he he knew about how the world was connecting on both sides. My hand slipped. I'm such a silly belly belly. We found it later, but there was something unnatural about it. I think the sign was definitely weird. Because it was on the other side of the uh the river. I'm most confused by how the sign got there. I should remember exactly what happened with that sign. Alright, here we go. Another? All right. At which point was the signboard swept away? River. That was pretty, pretty easy. Where is the end of the river? The chapel. Chapel side. And then it ended on the mansion side. I bet that's the next question. Where was the signboard found after it was swept away? <clears throat> mansion side. Compared to the river's current, which way did the signboard float? Floated to the left? The, the wrong direction? Against the current. Great. It appeared as though the sign was carried against the river's current. We all saw Mew drop the sign and watch the river carry it downstream. And the river was wide there. The sign should have traveled downriver toward the chapel, correct? It should have hit the wall on the far side of the chapel and stopped there. That's not where we found it. We found it near the mansion, nestled in some rocks. The signboard should have been near the chapel, but we found it on the other side. Hold up. Didn't you stay on the chapel side? She probably grabbed the signboard from the chapel wall to cross the river. Then left it on the boulders near the mansion so she could get back. Why would she leave the signboard where it could get swept away and leave her stranded? Also, this has nothing to do with walking through the wall, right? We're getting off topic? No, this this has everything to do We're with so it. We're so close to the truth. We just have to connect the how and what. All the mysterious things that happened have to connect with each other somehow. Connect how? A wall only objects can pass through. Sounds that shouldn't be heard. A signboard going against the river current. How are they all connected? <laughs> I don't know. But Shuichi should know, right? No, you do know. What? We would be in a lot of trouble if you didn't. The 
only one who can solve this mystery and save us all is you. Why are you doing this? What is your goal? I'm very confused. So, how are they connected? Do you know Shuichi? Ah, well, what we know so far is that the unnatural way the sign was carried is possibly related to the wall. Seems so simple to me. To do with a wall that only objects can pass through. The sign should have stopped at the wall on the other side of the chapel. But if that wall happened to be the one that you set to allow objects through, I see. It's a wall only non humans can pass through. That means the signboard can pass through the wall, right? Even if it could pass through the chapel wall, how did it end up by the mansion? The only way it could do that is if the wall was a warp zone. But it's not, right? That's right. That's the real issue here. How could the signboard pass through the wall but end up on the mansion side? What would explain that? Leave it to me, Shuichi. I, your partner, will give you hints in times of trouble. What? This is the virtual world. We should throw away all of our common sense, okay? Huh? The hell does that even mean? Shuichi might be on to something there. We just need to forget about what we know and just think about it. How did the sailing board pass through the wall downstream and end up upstream? Putting common sense aside and focusing on the flow of the river... Uh... The downstream and upstream connect. That's it! I, I am so ahead of what, what they're talking both about. Both ends of the river were connected. Huh? Both ends of river connected? Exactly. To put it another way, the river isn't cut off at the wall near the chapel. It's all part of one big loop. The upstream part of the river is connected to it. What? What are you talking about? Both ends of the river can't... Again, throw out all common sense from your head. We're talking about the virtual world. Then what about the wall? There was only one wall that could be passed through. Right. Even if the river's connected and it goes through the chapel wall, it wouldn't have been able to go through the mansion wall too. It loops around like in a circle. <clears throat> Wait, in that case... I got it! I know why Mew only set up one wall. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about now? The reason she only set up one wall is because the chapel and the mansion walls, they're the same wall. That's it! Easy. The walls by the chapel and the mansion aren't separate. They're the same wall. The same wall? It's not just the river. The walls themselves are connected. Don't think of it as two separate walls, but a single wall parallel to the y-axis. I that single got wall it, divides but the entire virtual world. This is answering. This is confirming all of my theories, but the thing that I don't get is who did this and why. The idea is you pass through the wall by the chapel and come out by the mansion. <laughs> Everything is starting to connect. See? 
didn't I tell you? Everything is connected. Damn it, Kokichi. Just tell us. Shh, it's okay. More importantly, this is the final stretch. If both the river and wall are connected, then you can find the secret. Shuichi, you already know the secret behind the virtual world, right? Secret, huh? Yes, I suppose we should clear that up. We need to solve the mystery of the virtual world. What is the unique feature of the virtual world? Okay, it's not the L. World. I don't know. It's not P. World. World. Not a mess. World what? World, world, world law. What? What is this backwards P thing? Oh my god! Why do I feel so stupid right now? Yes, that's it. The virtual world is a loop. Oh my god! You didn't have to make it. <laughs> Just like in old games, right? Like, for example... When a character goes off the left side of the screen and reappears on the right! Yes, exactly! The edges of the virtual world are linked together in a continuous loop! The virtual world... Oops! What in the world?! If that's true, it would explain the way the signboard was swept away. It vanished into the wall downstream of the river, came out of that same wall upstream, and floated with the currents until it got caught on the rocks. What was the world like before me added the wall? Actually, there wasn't a wall on the y-axis at all, and the x-axis was set to loop. Are you serious? Even if it is a computer program, isn't that too crazy? A looping world. That's more extraordinary than even magic. But at least it's not a boring answer. It also explains all the things that happened. Huh? It doesn't explain everything, does it? Kind of. I still don't know why we heard that one sound or Kibo's voice. Because they, they're, they're not on a loading zone. They're just, they're like, just separated by a wall. Yeah, sound doesn't go past the map loading point. Actually, if we know that the world is a loop, we can explain that as well. Huh? Really? Yes. But first we need to be clear of where the loop starts. Where the loop starts. Doesn't it loop at the walls next to the mansion and chapel? Not necessarily. If we heard a noise at the chapel from inside the mansion, then the loop. There! What? The map loading point was where the virtual world looped. <sighs> oh, God, I'm stupid. The but the loading point was actually at the edges. So the wall we created wasn't at the edges of the world, but rather... The wall was at the center of the world. So the mansion and chapel were near each other, with a wall between them. And any sounds emitted near the chapel would also reach the mansion. The wall only allows non-humans to pass through, so sound should be able to pass through easily. That's right! That's how the virtual world works! <laughs> <laughs> Im 
Impressive, Shuichi! Thank you? For you to get this far! Yes! Yes! You are useful indeed! For you to get this far? What are you, some villain pulling the strings? Nope. You pulled the strings here, not me. Remember? Mew also set this trap. It all began when Mew showed us the map. Because of the map, we mistakenly thought the loading point was at the center. Okay. Which in turn, made the mansion and chapel seem farther away from each other. But the structure of the world wasn't actually like that. There was a wall along the y-axis, and the x-axis came around in a loop. By putting that wall in the center of that world, she cut off the loop. So ever since Mew showed us that map, we were caught in her trap. But we solved this mystery thanks to Shuichi. All hail our savior! Yeah, if Shuichi wasn't here, then we never would have solved this mystery. That's right. Good work, Shuichi. Hey, Shuichi, you saved us. Kokichi knew the entire time, though. Uh, you're welcome. Just because we found out the virtual world's secret doesn't mean we can take it easy yet. Actually, this culprit hunt just got to the exciting part. Even if we know all the tricks, it's pretty meaningless if we don't find the culprit. That's how a class trial works, after all! Kichi talking like Monokuma again. No matter what you say, I'm not gonna believe your lies! So, what a... Like, Kokichi also talked to Monokuma before this trial began. Not, not even the trial, before we even went into the virtual world, he wanted to mess with this virtual world. I don't know what he did with Monokuma or what he agreed with. I'm gonna believe in everyone. That's how I'm gonna reach the truth. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens next. What is Kokichi's plan here? He's definitely prodding at Kaido, Kaito on purpose. There's no time for distractions like him. All we have to do is find the culprit who killed Mew. It doesn't matter how many little mysteries we solve if we can't find the culprit. It would all be for nothing. But I still don't know for sure who it could be. Who used Mew's own plan against her to kill her? Who killed Mew? 